Hello everyone, Manuel from Independent Physics here, and today I will explain how general relativity can be used to study galaxy rotation curves instead of the usual Newtonian gravity and mechanics, and how general relativity does not explain them either. We measure the velocities of stars and gas in galaxies around their center, and how generally the rotation curves are flat instead of following the expected decay of velocities at large radii, the so-called Keplerian falloff. Here I briefly show the Newtonian calculation assuming Newton's shell theorem as an approximation, even though the theorem only holds for spherically symmetric systems. One might be tempted to conclude that using Newtonian mechanics and gravity here, even at weak gravitational regimes and low velocities with respect to the speed of light, is too much of an approximation and not accurate enough. So let's try to study galaxies with Einstein's theory of general relativity. The linear approximation to general relativity is given by gravito-electromagnetism, which is a second-order post-Newtonian effect. For slowly moving matter, we start with a metric solution similar to the Schwarzschild metric, in which rho is the usual Newtonian gravitational potential, and A is the so-called gravitomagnetic vector potential. Now we can use the same formalism as in classical electrodynamics. We can also define the gravitoelectric vector potential E. The gravitomagnetic equivalent of the Lorentz force acting on a particle with mass m and moving velocity v results in an acceleration value which is independent of the mass of the particle to satisfy the equivalence principle that depends on the gravitoelectric potential E, the velocity of the mass and the gravitomagnetic potential v. The contribution of the gravitomagnetic potential v to the equations of motion is responsible for the effect known as lens theorem precession effect. And we could think that maybe the gravitomagnetic effects of B alter the orbits of stars and gas around the galaxy and explains galaxy rotation curves. Using the Milky Way's visible mass with no dark matter, we can roughly estimate its angular momentum at a typical distance from the core, and we get a radial acceleration contribution from the gravitomagnetic vector potential, which is more than five orders of magnitude smaller than the Newtonian centrifugal acceleration using only the Newtonian potential. Thus, the gravitomagnetic effect is quite small, and using the linear approximation to general relativity is not enough to explain the galaxy rotation curves. And this is no surprise, because the velocity discrepancies between the measured velocities and the ones expected from Newton are really big. We borrowed these calculations from Victor Titov, which we found on his blog, and he also uploaded a preprint to archive about it, which I will leave in the description if you want to read more about it. At the end of his preprint, Victor also addresses a question I've been thinking about for some time, which is, what if by assuming asymptotic flatness and flat Minkowski metric at infinity, we are not considering boundary conditions which are the ones that explain galaxy dynamics? In the end, the modification required to solve galaxy rotation curves shows that the departure from general relativity or Newtonian gravity must kick in at very low field intensities in the weak gravitational regime of the outer part of galaxies, where the effects of boundary conditions could make a difference. But I thought this could not be the case, because general relativity satisfies Birkhoff's theorem and the strong equivalence principle, and it looks like one needs to break with them in a modified theory of gravity that can explain galaxy rotation curves. Nevertheless, Victor uses McVitie's metric for a compact, spherically symmetric source of gravitation, with a mass m, embedded in a friedman lemaitre robertson walker cosmological background. This basically accounts for the expansion of the universe, and although the contribution from the gravitomagnetic term is not small, it's a pure radial term, and its curl and contribution to B vanishes. So Victor concludes that boundary conditions can be ignored, and that they cannot resolve the problem of galaxy rotation curves either. In his blog, he also states that the universe at large is measured to be almost flat, and in galactic scales, the error introduced by assuming that space-time is flat at the large scale must be very small. But we know curvature can be very small near the event horizon of a very big black hole, while acceleration is very strong. Small curvature often implies weak tidal forces, but it doesn't automatically mean weak gravitational accelerations. Thus, I'm not entirely convinced that the universe at large doesn't significantly modify local dynamics in galaxies, even with pure general relativity. It makes sense that the expansion of space in the friedman lemaitre robertson walker metric doesn't. But the gravitational potential of the observable universe is very big, 
and we know that deviations from Newton or Einstein always take place below a certain acceleration scale, which matches the gravitational field intensity of the observable universe. This observation is the true achievement of MOND. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you Victor Titov for such an interesting calculation. And see you again here in Independent Physics.